What's up guys and welcome back to the shop. And in today's video, we are going to be tackling leaks or at least a leak of sorts. Uh, and because I always film these intros first, you are gonna find out just as well as I am at the end of the video whether I fix it or not. So I'm not sure if that's a great thing to do. Maybe I should film these after. But anyways, it's going to be on the Big Bear. Last video I did with the Big Bear, uh, my daughter was helping me and we did the front brakes, if you guys remember that. Uh, I will have a playlist down below if you guys wanna see other work that I've done to this machine. But uh, I, this Big Bear doesn't have much downtime, especially not during their winter time because right now, as you can tell, I have the plow mounted and it's been snowing almost nonstop, kind of annoying. But I do wanna give it some downtime now because like I said, there's a leak. Uh, something is, it's oily, not quite sure what it is, but we're gonna start by giving it a good wash. Come on, girl. So it's been a couple of days actually since the wash. Uh, I did it on the weekend. We are now on, what day are we? Anyways, uh, and here's my drip pan. Yeah, as you can see, there's definitely something. Not quite sure what it is. It's oily. Uh, I didn't do the greatest job cleaning actually. Now that I look at it, I missed a few spots back here. Plastics were in the way, but uh, I, I think what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna remove the plow because that's kind of in the way. And then I'm gonna remove all the skid plates from probably front to back, including that diff guard, and put it on the lift, see what we got, and hopefully it's nothing major. Okay, so we got a couple of bolts each side here. And this is another uh, video that I did make, is how I assembled this plow and I, how I kind of made the whole bracket. Again, it'll be in the description if you guys are interested. Let's try this again. There we go. Next up, we got the skid plates. I don't remember doing this before. I normally do this stuff on the lift, but I gotta get the skid plates off to be able to get it on the lift. Oh, that's a heavy skid plate, whatever. Trying to protect it must be important. Oh, that's why, because it hangs down. Well, isn't that something? Yeah, that's gross. All right, so what do we have here? Well, not much more than what we saw earlier, but since we're way up in the air now, and take a look, oh, Oh, that's kind of nasty. So that's what that big skid plate is protecting. Yeah, it's protecting this big gearbox. So, oh, look at that. All sorts of goodness. -y. Looks like I'm still not done doing some cleaning under here. What about the front? Okay, yeah. so we got one bolt there. That's, see, that's what I was talking about. We don't have all of our hardware holding the skid plate in place. So if we go further to the front, we got that hole in there. I think these two holes are being used. My new U-joints are still in good shape. Front diff's looking okay, it's dirty. Might be a good time to give it a good cleaning. And is that a secondary? Yeah, that looks like another place to drop the oil in your diff other than up here, I wonder. I guess you might not get all of it if you do it over here because this sits a little bit lower. So this is the big heavy skid plate I was talking about. I mean, look how thick this one is compared to the rest of the skid plates. These are pretty thin in comparison, but it's also holding a whole pile of oil, which leads me to believe that that's where the oil leak is coming from. And it's also holding a whole pile of other stuff, but, uh, See, this is the one that's in the middle. Doesn't seem to be too bad. It's got a little bit over here. But this guy in the front, yeah, holding something as well. Like I said earlier, there's like a long lost washer over here. But uh, 
We're going to clean these up and I'm also going to have to clean up underneath the whole bike and of course let it sit for another overnight and we'll reconvene in the morning. It's the next day and unfortunately yes it is in fact leaking I mean check this out I had washed the drain pan completely dry and I think it turned out okay it's not super clean it's not perfect but if we go to the front here the front diff looks much better and let's take a look underneath and see if we can find that leak. The back of the engine is looking much cleaner and let's see yeah I was using like dish soap and all sorts of different cleaners I had and mixing them together probably not a good idea but it did work after all and what do we have there's the leak hmm oh it's not what I was hoping I hope I'm wrong but looks to me like it's the pinion seal so I removed the cover protecting the dry shaft and yes of course it is definitely wet you can see it over there and you can also see it even better uh, right there which kind of sucks because guys if you've been watching my channel for any length of time you know that just recently I did this drive shaft uh, u-joint as well as the one right over here and that wasn't fun so I'm hoping and if I remember correctly, I should be able to slide at least just a drive shaft out. And if I can slide out the drive shaft, I might be able to, between the collar, I uh, might be able to loosen off this nut. Hopefully. Again, I'm saying hopefully. And then remove the, uh, the yoke. But here's the hoping. It's starting to come back to me now. So after removing the boot, uh, there is a little circlip right there. And I'm just going to remove the circlip, that spring should release, and I should be able to pull the drive shaft out. But it's still going to make it kind of difficult to get the nut out in between that yoke. But I'm going to give it a shot anyways. Well, this should all come out pretty good. Oh, there you go. I just did this. So that came out real nice. Now hopefully the drive shaft will follow as well. And I just kicked the camera. Sorry, guys. Oh, and I'm realizing that there's a circlip at the back. All right, circlip at the back is out. And that should come out. Oh, come on. Do you know what this is like? Don't tell me. Yep. This is like the rhino, where it's just to see about ready to come out but it's, it's it's just not there so well that's awesome because now i'm gonna have to pan the camera over here so now the next thing i'm gonna do is i'm gonna pull these there's four bolts one on each side uh two or sorry on each side and i'm just gonna pull the whole front drive shaft ahead so i can pull that drive shaft out or sorry let me say that again. I'm going to pull the whole differential ahead so I can pull the drive shaft out. And there's two more right at the back on that cross member. And now, after freeing up half the bike, I should be able to slide this up and pull this out. Come on now. Yes, that's looking good. And it wants to go this way, so we're going to pull it up this way. There we go. There's a drive shaft. Put that down here. Come on. Oh, sorry guys. Kind of a tight spot. Nothing fits in there. I have tried just about every wrench, every possible combination, like crescents and opening wrenches and it's just not looking good guys i gotta pull this off again so if you're in this situation where you have to either a do a u-joint or b have to do the seal on that output shaft do both don't do like me and just do the u-joint and not do the seal because one well, of course i did it. the seal wasn't leaking 
and yeah it's just it's not cool at all so i'm gonna take this off off camera uh, i've already done this before on camera it wasn't pretty uh, and then we're gonna go and move forward to what it's like to replace the seal well that went really well probably because i just did it about uh, i don't know three months ago it came out like a breeze i didn't have to work too hard at it and i think it goes without saying guys if you've upgraded your u-joints like i have with the grease fitting now is a good time to grease them i mean like the yoke has to be in place and all but i mean without putting the drive shaft in place you get way better uh coverage on that uh grease fitting so you know what i mean before i go ahead and start pulling the yoke off uh, this is full of oil of course so we're going to drain the oil there's a drain plug at the bottom i'm going to show you that in a minute but it's always a good practice to remove the fill port because if in the event you can't put oil back in this uh, it would be a bad day so that one actually came off really well so we're going to take that off and then we'll drain it from the bottom what the heck is that's not supposed to happen what is going on here well i don't know why that is overfilled the way it is guys but uh this is the drain plug right here and i'm gonna get the right socket all right now let's see if we have anything weird come out of the bottom here oh that is really tight well nothing chunky seems to be pretty good yeah, it's a little bit thin though of course i don't know if it's ever been changed in its entire life so it's going to be really nice to do a change on this oil and now we can move on to removing that yoke because all the oil's out shouldn't have much more of a mess even though every time i work on anything i make a mess of sorts it's kind of like my thing apparently so hopefully i can get my ratchet on here okay now let's see got the park brake on and hopefully that's going to be enough to crack this loose but i highly doubt it nope it's just turning it so we're gonna have to use a little bit of impact i mean sometimes you gotta do what you gotta do but i mean check this out i've got my impact kind of like in a different time zone over here it's two or three extensions put together to get this on here i don't like to use an impact to take anything like a pinion uh yoke off because all that jarring kind of makes its way through the gears it's not a good thing so i got the brake on i'm just hoping that if i kind of nudge it a little bit here it should go it's quite stuck in there looks like this is going to require a little bit of heat so i'm going to try and heat up just a nut i'm not concerned about the seal at this point because well it's already uh messed up so okay and if i hurry up get this socket back on Oh, I don't like that at all. Alright, plan B. Alright, so here's what I come up with. I got an extension going through the yoke, and that will hopefully hold it. Now, it is leaning up against the crankcase. I'm going to try and avoid cracking that, of course, so I'm not going to put too much pressure on it. But I am also, if I pan back here a little bit, I'm also going to double wrench this, which there's a whole bunch of uh, full paws here. And, you know, I don't recommend doing any of this, of course. But I just can't seem to get that loose. I have put some penetrating oil, and it's heated up once more time here. So if I just... Uh, let me get this camera slightly out of the way here. Camera was in the way, guys. Sorry. Oh. Hey. It worked. All right, so am I actually going to... All right. I guess once it was cracked free, she's good. She's golden. Things are looking up. All right, now what do we got? 
comes out nice. And we can already see a little bit of wearing on that yoke there. So I'm going to try and clean that up with a little bit of emery cloth. And let's take a look inside at that seal. Well, that seal doesn't look the greatest from here. So I'm going to go back to the store tomorrow, pick up a new seal, and let's put it in together. So I've been picking away at this seal for like 10 minutes now, and it's probably hard to tell. Uh, but this seal does not come out from this end. It actually comes out from the back side of this, which means I have to remove this whole gearbox. And in order to remove the gearbox, that means I have to remove the swing arm and I have to remove a few other things. I wasn't planning on that. I really thought I could just kind of pull it out the way it is and just kind of plop it back in. So yeah, that's, that's awesome. So that's going to do it for today's video guys. I really was planning on getting that seal changed and done all in one video, but this video is probably way long right now and I still have to remove the rear axle and the whole subframe and swing arm and open up the gear case to even get to the seal. So I'm going to make this a two part video. Uh, I hope you guys watch that one as well because I mean it's bound to be fun. I'm not super excited as you can tell, but it's it's going to be fun. We're going to finish the seal. It's not going to leak anymore. It hasn't leaked for, well, I mean, this thing is 30-something years old now. So, anyways, with that being said, thanks for watching. Hope you guys have watched to the end here. And if you have, you're, you guys are awesome. And I will see you in the next video.